Ahbat Ya Rasul Kareem. One of the characteristics is they give for, for people who train through these awliya, they forget nothing, nothing. So, oh but that's so bad if bad things have been done to you, they forgive everything because Allah granted them forgiveness. Especially the, the shaykhs are under each name of Allah dresses the soul of a shaykh and each has a different name. So if they're dressed from ghafar, to be ghafoor, to be forgiving means the name that governs their wujud and their being then they forgive, 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 doesn't matter what was done is forgiven because that's the name that governs that soul. But at the same time they never forget because their soul is awake. Everything registered on, on this blockchain locked on, you can't take it off. You tell them something, it's locked on, they got it. But human, normal humans what? Shaitan biggest trick is to make them forget. They wake up in the morning and say, I forgot what you just said. But not them, a part of becoming woke and really woke means your soul is active, everything is, is locked on that file. They don't forget. So as a result of not forgetting, every day they try to do better and better and better and better. But the, what's the, the benefit when we hear it, shaitan make us miss it, but next day I forgot, oh I forgot, yeah I forgot that I'm supposed to be in nuqt and to surrender my will. So again the process of the meditation, muraqabah and all of the nearness is to take the heedlessness away, the stop forgetting. Ask that Allah burn it into your heart and soul so that to understand the teachings and not to forget them inshaAllah. Because shaitan by morning time fools everybody to forget inshaAllah. What we got? <clears throat> uh, assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum as salam wa rahmatullah Can you please elaborate what you meant by if you can see you would be dressed by it and its power forgive me for asking Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When did I say that? So I don't know. The quoting, you have to give me when I quoted that. So I don't know. If you can see, what happens? Uh, meant by, if you can see it, you would be dressed by it and its power. I don't know in reference to what that was, but I know that if you can see a devil, they're going to attack you. <laughs> so you, know, you halfway revived me on, so, on a subject. So let me be right on my subject now. Why you don't see, right? So if there are these marada, if the, the evil jinns and ifrit, if you can see them, they'll attack you and torment you. So one of the greatest gifts of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem is Allah veiled His creation. So don't destroy that veil by drugs, alcohol and psychotic, those are under drugs too and, and asking for it to be taken away. So the greatest gift Allah gave is the gift of a veil over your eyes. So why shaitan then has these people drinking and doing drugs? Because the effect on the drug is hitting something within their system, in their mind that lowers the veil 
and they start to see what they're not supposed to see. If you ever read articles on DT, del delirious, delirious tremor, what is it called when the alcoholics? They have a, a sickness called DT, delirious tremors. And literally when you read the articles on what they see when they're sort of alcoholics and they detox is exactly like you're talking about a jinn movie. So look at the ceiling, I see a spider with a big head rolling all over the place. I see actually thousands of them everywhere. I see this, I see that, I saw beings running into the wall, crawling on the floor. Yeah, yeah, this is the jinn world tormenting this person. So in the teachings these issues of trying to open, maybe we go do ayawanda, maybe you go do DMT, maybe you don't do these things, don't open and pierce these veils because you are not trained yourself for Allah to open the heart and open your spirituality. So nothing opens with tariqah until you're spiritually prepared to fight. If you're not prepared to push back the energies, push back the, these things that are coming, there's no need to see anything. Because if they see that you see them, they can torment all of your faculties. So imagine all day long it's looking at you, at night just coming and just looking at you. The fact that you saw it, it saw you and now it's all over your senses, the person goes mad and, and loses their ability to function. So the greatest gift Allah gave is the gift of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and that He veils the servant. So in spiritual progress and spiritual teachings the only focus is connect your heart, visualize the shaykh through your heart and that that's the only thing that's important is that I have to visualize my shaykh, I have to feel that I'm in the ocean of power, my breathing and my energy. We don't seek out crazy narcotics to make you to see things because you're going to pierce a, ve a veil that's just horrific, horrific. And that's all the shaitan wants, that's why shaitan is encouraging these servants to do these things so that they go mad and he destroys them. So one by one he takes out the army of the heavens. The army of the heavens are insan and human beings and that they should reach to their reality and have the power of a thousand men on earth. So like a checkers game or chess game, one by one he takes them out, 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 out so that there's nobody left to play the game. But Allah plans better and He gives more power to the ones left on the board. So inshaAllah then few will represent many, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. If we see jinns floating around the room and they are not attacking us, what are they? Yeah, try not to stare. Yeah, just do your ibadah, do your worshipness and don't focus on these things, inshaAllah. Could be hallucinations, could be many things. But again the focus is focus on the shaykh. So if you're meditating and have the ability to meditate and you think you have the ability to see, then you have to see the shaykh. And if you saw the shaykh then you have to enter into the ocean of power and that to be dressed by these oceans of power in which the energy overtakes you and you become extremely heated. You'll know the signs of that energy entering the system. But to you know sightseeing is not necessary, that's just like the people who ask about dreams. We said that these are you know situations that become dangerous. The, the, the dreamer is exactly that, a dreamer and that become very dangerous. Because if word gets out that you, you like dreams, they torment all night long and it, you don't even know it's a torment. But they're just casting, casting, casting because that's the system you're trying to open. Like we said, be careful what you pray for. So they say, we don't pray for dreams, we're not interested in these things, I need just to connect with the shaykh, see myself in an ocean of power and to be dressed by that power. And you'll know it, you feel the power is emanating through your hands, you feel the heat of that. That power is what will save you from these nefarious dreams because when you sleep at night you're like, a, 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 like an atomic submarine that you emanate so much heat because your body system and your soul is sort of taking over. You may even burn a pattern onto the fabric because of the energy that coming through the soul. So that, that, that's not something to play with. 
because of that energy that's coming that these lighted individuals, their energy is more than their physicality can handle. In their sleep phase their soul is coming out. So the excess amount of energy and heat that emanates from them is like a, like a dragon and that energy is everywhere. That those beings don't even come near this because they'll be eaten by that energy and by that power. So they don't send dreams to them, they don't try to waswas to them, they don't try anything. The reverse is that when those things are happening they're not reaching their energy state. And if they're not reaching the energy state they come closer and as they come closer it's like a Netflix. You're the screen and the jinn is the Netflix. He's just casting all sorts of thoughts and visions and illusions and delusions. So the, the way is very specific. If you think you can see, see the shaykh, unlock the reality of the shaykh. If you're not able to see the shaykh you're hallucinating and that's dangerous because many people are listening to us but they're borderline mental issues because they're attracted to spirituality. So you have to differentiate between medical difficulties and spiritual progress. Medical difficulty is when you start to start ending emails that I, I see everything everywhere, all the people on the bus are looking at me, talking to me, throwing things at me versus I'm able to see you, I'm able to feel the energy emanating and I feel this energy sort of overtaking my heart and soul and I'm heated. And the energy becomes so much that you know nothing can get near me because I'm heated up all the time. That's the right thing, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. If oneself had a disability and was given an opportunity to be in a better condition, or can he surrender his will to Allah till he takes it away? And what? Is it philosophy? Don't, don't understand philosophy questions. Yeah, if you have will, if you're this, these hypothetical situations I don't understand. Either way surrender your will to Allah Whatever your health condition is you surrender your will. You take the medicines that you have to take because it's the will of Allah and that uh, everyone has a weakness, everyone has a, a handicap so that they're not perfected and that's a safety for them because then sickness would enter into them. So when you have a beautiful bird you want to clip the wings, right? You haven't had a beautiful bird then. If you don't clip the wings the bird flies away. So these very expensive birds you get to clip the parrot's wings. It doesn't hurt it, just they took it so they can't lift with their weight. So in life, you know Allah knows best if you send somebody onto this earth perfect uh, this, perfect qira'at, perfect talk, perfect character, perfect everything, most likely they're going to be under the influence of shaitan and pride and arrogance and they go. So one is not going to be able to recite, one not going to know this, one not going to be able to do this. So everyone has a handicap in life, they have a sickness, they have a ailment and they need medication, they need this, whatever it is, you know Allah has these packages the way He wants it and as a result they remain humble and in need and continuously asking Allah for salvation, for help, for healing, for good health and that keeps again the relationship to be in need for Allah's nearness and support inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi can you please expand on that the students are a hidden one representing the shaykh to the outside world, does that mean they are one but act like zero? Hmm. That's like a philosophy again, yeah. <laughs> yes, I know. If you, I don't know what people are searching for or trying to hope that they are the one. But yeah, we said before, one and zero is what? Plus and minus. You have the energy, it, you take the energy. So actual binary code, what they said is a one and zero. It's actually not a one and zero because the computer doesn't read numbers. It's actually a charge and a current. The current comes. They said this is a one, 
the negation of the current became the zero. So it's on off, on off, on off. So better understanding for binary code is on and off. If you're in the teaching of the shaykh, the shaykh is on, you're off. If you're on in the presence of the shaykh and want to teach him something, there's no more relationship. So the students learn, shut off. You shut off, shut off, shut off so that you can absorb when he's on. Because he's the fires, the energies, the teachings are all energy based. So the one whom thinks himself a one and says, this guy is nothing, he actually never learned anything. He could be there for 20 years because in his mind he kept himself on and he said, this guy is nothing and so there was no conveyance of energy. But if the person truly negated themselves, they absorb the energy. And the greater their negation, the faster the energy is entering to them and the flow of energy is continuing to flow to them because then they continue that at home, they continue everywhere they go. So what happens? When they turned and, and learned and mastered this way of negating and turning off, then when they go into their home they're on because they're bringing their teaching into the home, they're bringing the, the guidance from the shaykh into the home, they're bringing the, the way of Allah to the home. Not that they're on that they're going to put the chair in the living room and say, I'm a bad, you know, give everybody a talk <laughs> but that they represent what they learned. And as a result of being on, the house and the household should respect them. The male, because we don't have female imams, so the male has to be that. If the male is not doing that and not achieving that, then that's a different reality than the, the, the female is then absorbing that reality and Prophet dressing them and blessing them from that reality. But they cannot take the role of a one in the house. You cannot emasculate the man and make the woman to be masculine, not in an Islamic way. And even become more drastic but they, they're holding my tongue from that so. So it's not that you can say, oh my husband he's not doing anything so I'm the one. Actually no, you're going to learn to how to really be a nukht because you're going to stay quiet and absorb the difficulty. And that's the way towards your sainthood. There's never a situation in which the woman can become a man and cannot take a masculine role within the home. That's not the way to her reality. So the whole teaching last night and the night before is then you become a nukht and then your nukht becomes much more harder to achieve because the, the person is drinking, alcoholic, crazy, whatever it is. You stay to be a nukht, you meditate, then you reach very strong saintly powers. And you pray and something hits that person's head that they can't imagine. So some people reach to realities they are very powerful and every time the person in the house does something, something very bad happens to them. And they didn't have to say anything, they didn't have to make themselves to be masculine, they just made a du'a and things began to go really bad. So that's the situation, that's, that's the, the system in which Allah wanted. Satanic system is again to confuse. Tell the man he's not a one, you should be a, a nukht at home. And tell the woman she should be a one, she should be a man at home. I said, no, it doesn't work that way. InshaAllah. As Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Is feeling nervousness and anxiety at work with manager and colleagues or outside also to do with the wrong balance of binary code? I think feeling nervous is everyone now, people are, are, are not well, people are not stable, they're, they're confused, they're, they're agitated, fearful because of everything we're teaching, they're sensing it but don't know it. 
They think the bank is going to close, they think the money is going to disappear, they think the jobs are going to disappear, they think this is going to collapse, that going to collapse and they don't have the, the grace of faith, they don't have the beauty of faith. And we described that the night before, that this is an immense gift, you only f see it now. Because you watch these social media, it's like watching somebody w with a manic schizophrenic character because it's going very fast from one video to the next video. The bank closing, banks are closing, banks are closing. Take out all your money, take out all your money, fast, 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 faster. But you know this person is going to jump off a roof by the end of his second TikTok. Why? Because there's absolutely no hope. It's one thing to to find how all of the hadiths are coming and say, wow this is amazing. But for us, uh, whatever they're planning, Allah has a better plan because He wrote the whole plan and that's why He inspired, they're about to do that, okay go get some clothes, go, no problem, okay put that aside. They're about to do that, okay well 15 years we have food down here, waiting like Noah's ship. I told you there'd be a day <laughs> when that groceries would be really like gold. When? When they can't find food in a grocery store. Until then you just try to keep it open because one day this will be a ship, a ship of safety. And everybody and everyone who followed Mawlana Shaykh's teachings will be like that. You don't need a lot of gold because you're not trying to buy up an empire, you need to survive to go out and get your sustenance when everybody else has nothing. You need a, a food that only has enough for a barakah that Allah make it to be multiplied because it's zikr food and zikr energies and the jinn will come into that environment and begin to teach the believers on how to be safe and how their food is going to be multiplied. Means Allah has many, many plans. We said before even they say, oh they're going to throw a bomb on us. Doesn't matter, the jinn will open a door and you'll move right through it and nothing going to be falling on your head. So what did we describe as a portal in, in the Qur'an? Last night there was another, we were talking about another portal, how many incidences throughout the Qur'an in which dimensions changed. The hadith we gave that this, the companions went to an island in the South, South Indian island where they saw Dajjal and they said they came upon this creature that was chained. Do you think that he was literally chained on an on a island where everybody was passing him and talking to him? Or no, Allah wanted to open a portal for them. And they landed the island and they thought it's exactly an island that they were supposed to be at but it was a portal, a portal opened for them and in that portal they went and they talked to the Dajjal. And that's a famous hadith, they gave all the information back to Prophet said, if what you're describing to me is true then you spoke with the Dajjal. But that wasn't in a physical realm but Allah opened a portal for the companions to witness it and to give the yaqeen and certainty of what Prophet is teaching because these are the, they're like the awliya of yaqeen. They heard the words of Prophet Allah makes it to be true for them. Why? So that we would understand all oh, many, many incidences of, of portals. Ashab al Kaf ran from this, the, the satanic system, Allah said, enter into this cave, 309 years passed. Now was that in just a blink of an eye? The time frame we have no understanding, it was but a day Allah gives us a hint. They rolled around, they don't look like they're dirty, 309 years in that portal went. And, but, and Allah says, they thought it was but a day. So it means now there's a time frame that they just actually moved into something and came back out, 309 years changed. Um, Allah can take you through something and then let them explode this and you go through the portal. So again they're going to try something but Allah has a better plan in store. So for the believers let them put their faith and trust in Allah What was the Surah 951? Allahumma yeah. salli wa sallam. Yeah, say? Let the believer put their trust in Allah They said, Ayn Ayatul Kareem 951 
is the ayah in which they should be reciting and is under the control of Imam Mahdi of many, many things under his control. But this one is a dress upon those whom will be with Sayyidina Mahdi Then Allah reconfirming from ancient Qur'an that tell them, put their faith and trust in Me, the believers, that everything written in Allah's book, nothing going to happen to anyone by any surprise. Allah wrote everyone who's coming, who's going and who's protected, inshaAllah. وَلَنَا يُسِيبَنَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا مَوْنَا وَلَا يَتَوَقَّلِ مُؤْمِنًا InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, the teachings this weekend have been so heavy that it has been reflecting all bad decisions I made in the past. The guilt is overwhelming. How to overcome this? Make your durood sharif, but alhamdulillah, it's good when somebody can be honest in their analysis of themselves, and that's a good phase. That when we're, we're true to ourselves and true to analyzing ourselves, oh my gosh, you know. We, so we're in a continuous state like that, that every moment that everything seems to be a bad choice, everything and that's a part of being humble. And that Allah is great and Allah will correct. As long as we acknowledge we have the sickness is the greatest part because most people don't even think they're sick. So what? No, I have no problems, actually I'm a great person. And that becomes the danger but, oh Allah, see the, his phone agrees, <laughs> Ya Mughithun Ya Allah, SubhanAllah, that's nice, it's okay, <laughs> Ya Mughith, Ya Allah. So means that Allah is great and uh, if we are weak, as long as we acknowledge our weakness then there's always room to grow. If we don't acknowledge then we're in danger inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, Sayyidi, what if the husband can't make <coughs> money and the woman has to? There's going to be 10,000 variations of these. Uh, the, just give me a reason to be a one. That's the thing, that's the thing. Just give me a reason to be a one and I'm going to beat him. <laughs> I can't do that. It's just be a nukht, be a nukht. InshaAllah Allah with barakah of being a nukht, open. And Allah opens and gives uh, what people are in need of. Everything has a, a barakah and a blessings inshaAllah and that uh, make du'a and uh, pray and hope that the person is good and that their character is good. And if the character is not good then this is then the, the, the burden that somebody has to bear. The, the burden if the person is eating is more important that, am I eating? Alhamdulillah. Do I have a roof over my house? Alhamdulillah. Am I okay? Alhamdulillah. So leave it at that because then it could get worse in which you won't have it either. And then he doesn't have it, you don't have it and you're both on the street wondering where the food is, where the shelter is, where everything is. So as long as Allah is sending you say, Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbi could be better inshaAllah send guidance to this person so that they do the things that are necessary for rizq to come to the home and to our environment. And then be patient, that's all a part of the thousand or ten thousand examples of being a nukht. If you felt it was humiliating, you're on course to being a nukht. If you felt it was humiliating and insulting, you're on your path to being a nukht. So the process of being a zero is not something easy. That he yells, okay you're going to be a nukht faster. That is angry person because there's going to be 10,000 variations of this question. What if these angry person then everyone's going to be a nukht faster. So a any way you look at it you were, we're going to reach to be a nukht. <laughs> we'll avoid those questions. Yeah we'll avoid those, <laughs> those <laughs> aggressive <laughs> and angry ones, those. those are aggressive <laughs> angry nukhts. Uh, As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi <laughs> 
What is the reality behind King Charles' recent coronation yeah, in mashallah. connection to the last days and Sayyidina Mahdi alayhi salam? Yeah, mashallah, they, uh, we, uh, there's a king, Canada is under a king. So alhamdulillah we're all under the commonwealth of England and the tajalli of the king and the, the blessings of a king. InshaAllah Allah open the reality and that's what's important is that uh, these knowledges are not from this time. So remember that uh, everybody has a reality until they reach their Divinely reality. So we're not in a place to judge people for their now but for what they will become is the teaching. So in, in these messianic days of a Messiah coming and last days coming the kingdom of uh, King Charles known Mawlana Shaykh called as King Hussain. And they have articles that say the queen is related to Ahlul Bayt and that she has Ahlul Bayt lineage. And they say their intelligence offices know that, royalty, Islamic royalty knows that. So this, they have this all documented. So this is a, a line from the heavens and that uh, seven European nations would come to Islam and come to Sayyidina Mahdi So we're not talking about now because all the you know crazy people on the internet start making all these horrible comments. But look at yourself before Allah guided you what you were doing and look at all of the people in Islam what they were doing before Allah guided them. So nobody's coming out you know with a flag in their hand. But we come into the world, we do crazy things and Allah guides people alhamdulillah. This is the beauty of Islam that Allah can wash anyone from whatever dirt, from whatever background, from whatever badness, Allah make them a shining star. If Allah wants them to shine, they're gonna shine. So in these last days everyone's going to be like that, come with all sorts of different backgrounds but they will be shining stars on this earth. And so all of the commonwealth and all the, the, the reign and the, the kingdom that under his nazar and under his authority, inshaAllah Allah bring it to the Mahdiyoon that is uh, the reality under the time of Sayyidina Mahdi and events that, that can't be understood. We said before that most people don't even understand what that means for the time of Sayyidina Mahdi that the majority of people coming to Imam Mahdi are not going to be Muslim. If you don't see that on this earth now then you must be blind. Do you see that the UAE and those countries, what they have? Christmas celebrations and they pay 400 billion dollars for soccer games. You think they're sitting and waiting for Sayyidina Mahdi And the other one who, who building Muqabah? which is ten empire state buildings in a complex that looks like the Kaaba, like Abrar, the one who was competing with the Mecca. They're, they're, you think they're sitting and thinking, oh I wish inshaAllah Sayyidina Mahdi is coming to destroy everything that we've built. <laughs> no. So they're not waiting for that and definitely they're not praying for that and most of them have give their allegiance to something other than that. And whom Allah guides will be guiding and it's not going to be what people think, that it's going to be other people that Allah brings towards the reality of Sayyidina Mahdi and they have a calling within their wujud, within their soul and that a new reality will rise from them. So this is going to be astonishing times, many countries won't be here and many new realities will appear. So what we know of this world is not going to be what we understand. Before the advent of Imam Mahdi there should be a nuclear war that covers the earth and mankind goes to the brink of extinction. Well then how many cities will be around? How many countries will be in existence? How many people will be around? Most of which will be gone. 
because all that, that angers Allah of these structures and these buildings and what this dunya has built before the representative of the kingdom of Allah enters onto this earth and passes the veil of his zuhoor to enter, we just said that the kingdom of earth is coming. So you know what, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So that's a heavy statement that the kingdom of Allah is going to come onto this earth. It's not going to allow those structures to stand, right? What happened when Prophet was coming? When the light of Prophet was going to enter into the earth, all the falsehood collapsed onto the earth. The lights of falsehood went out, the statues of falsehood collapsed, why? Because the king of heavens has arrived upon the earth and this time much more power coming that Allah because now it's towards Qiyamah. That all these structures that show the arrogance of their existence because they're all ones. You see how the buildings are up high? Showing they're one, they're one, I'm the one, this one, world trade chamber number one, this is one, one tower, this one, no. All of their zilzilas and everything will be brought down. All of their jang and their fighting will bring everything down. So it's not going to be a world that people understand. So people don't even know who's going to be around and what they're going to be like uh, after all of these difficulties. How much did they struggle in a new character, how many miracles they saw that they accepted to come into Islam and they left their ways, left any bad de desires and bad ways. But the foresight of these awliya come to tell us that the, this individual is going to be very important with Sayyidina So just for us to be patient and watch how Allah unfolds because many people don't even know if they're going to be around and that they survive these calamities and difficulties. They have to be with the tariqahs so that they could receive all of these knowledges, these realities, what to recite and what type of protections to have against these calamities. You think they're asking for the protections? No, for us who, who deal with the taweez and ruqyah and, and healing. All of these are essential to survive these events that are coming. Have you seen how aggressively angry the posts are when we post these things? So these are not the people who will show humility to put ruqya and to put something on them as a protection. So you think they're surviving these things? No, that's why the majority of the people are not. But you know when the center is like a litmus test that there are people who come from Western backgrounds, they say, what is that, is it healing? Oh, give me two of them and they put it on because they're humble. They say, if it works, you guys look like good people, it's on me. And they go around and they have it. Then look at somebody who thinks he's an alam and start cursing things as if he's never read a hadith on ruqya and, and look at the khiswa of the Kaaba, do you see any writing on it? And they say, why do you have writing on something? I mean unbelievable character. You see, these people are going to survive these things that are coming? No, the first ones are going to be washed away like the foam of the ocean because this, the, the rudeness in their belief and the lack of any light in their belief. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaam ala al-mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan, There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.